Okay, we're going to get ASMR. started with the study of the Bible. First thing we want to do is start with prayer. Almighty God in heaven, we are so grateful to have this place to gather together, even uh, virtually, and be able to study together that we might know you more and know the work that you've done in preserving your word for us. We are grateful for all those who gathered here today. We pray your blessing upon this time. May you be pleased by us uh, coming together to, uh, to learn more about your Bible and how you have gone through and providentially protected it through the centuries and provided it for us today so we could have a reliable and accurate translation in our hands to know about you. We pray you'll bless this time. We ask this all in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. We are on Amen. lesson eight, chocolate chips and the Bible. Oh, yeah. What do chocolate chip cookies have to do with the Bible? Everything. This is an illustration um, that is an adoption by Greg Kokel from Stand to Reason. And this exercise is based on that idea. We are going to have a brand new fun game called... Manuscript Expert in Arc. Oh, yeah. So, today, we are going to be... Part. Manuscript Expert? Well, I'm going to explain it. Uh, we're going to take about 10 minutes to check out a chocolate cookie recipe. So, everybody, get off your duffs. Get moving. We're heading out. It's a field trip for Bible study. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Woohoo! Yeah. Now, very important in Arc. Don't get eight during your field trip. Field trip, okay? Nobody, field nobody get eight during your field trip. Future. All right. So, what are we looking at? We are looking at chocolate chip cookie recipes. There are six of them. We are going to six. refer to them as M1. See the little number right here? M1, M1. which means manuscript one, through M6. M1. Yep, so each one is a forward and back. Yep. So I've adapted it as best I could from the training. All right. We're going to take about 10 minutes to compare the differences in these chocolate chip cookie recipes. The recipes are on the boards, and uh, we want you to make sure that you, you connect it to the front and the back. All right? And do every once in a while take a look around. Make sure you don't get eight. Uh, during the Bible study and field trip. Uh, this will involve comparing and contract contrasting these six different recipe manuscripts. And you may want to use the ARC chat or the Twitch chat to record the differences you spot. This is uh, one time where being in-game would definitely be a great advantage for you. All right, so here's the story behind this. All of these chocolate chip cookie recipes were unearthed on ARC and placed here for your review. We don't have the original recipe in our possession. These are all copies. Some, maybe all, are copies of copies. But there are okay. differences between the various re recipes you will see. I want you to spend about the next 10 minutes or so looking over these copies, the six manuscripts labeled M1 through M6, and compare and contrast between them with each other and see if you can identify the things that are different between each one of these. Notice the changes. Notice the manuscripts that have things written that others do not. When, you're, when you observe these and find out how they differ, record it down. You can, like I said, you can put it in the uh, Twitch chat or you can put it on the, um, on the ARC chat. Or you can write it down in text. I'm going to give you, I'm going to give those in game an opportunity to review them. And also I'm going to walk between them for those of you who are at home or on Twitch so you can see what they are. Then we're going to review them line by line and see what it shows us about these ancient manuscripts. And this is what's important. We don't know how many generations removed 
they are from the original. And these are all copies with corruptions in the text. Every place where there is a difference, just drop it in chat or in the ARC chat. Errors can include deleted words, spelling errors, abbreviations, or overt changes. Like I said, we're going to take about 10 minutes, then we're going to come back together and go through the recipes line by line. So I'm going to use my screen for you guys here. In fact, I wonder if I should get on my cat. I think I'm going to get on my cat. So you so guys can have a little... On well, it's, you get 10 total minutes. So let's do that. All right, there we go. Now I'm up a little bit. So you can kind of see that's that's recipe one. Okay, two and a fourth cups of all-purpose flour, one tablespoon baking soda, one tablespoon salt, one tablespoon butter, three quarter cup granulated sugar, three quarter cup packed brown sugar, one tablespoon vanilla extract, two eggs, two cups of chocolate chips. So that's the first one. Let's go take a look at the second one. I get like walking like this and turn. All right. beep, beep. Beep, beep, beep. My cat, I want to back up. That's what the second one looks like. Kind of looks similar, doesn't it? But there's something different. And I but know there what. is something different. Well, go ahead and write it down in the ARC chat or in the Twitch chat. And Andy is using or the uh, Twitch chat. If you chat. have a notebook, use well, that. yeah, you can use a notebook too. You guys can kind of see what that is. There we go. All right. So Andy's got the fact that it says granulated sugar. Interesting. Interesting. Let's take a look Granulated? here and keep going. Hmm. Look at the next one. I see this one. Two and a quarter cups of all-purpose flour, a tablespoon baking soda, a tablespoon salt, a cup butter, a cup granulated sugar, packed brown sugar, one tablespoon vanilla extract, two eggs, two cups of chocolate chips. What's interesting is we kind of know that something's going on with these because just the amount of space they take up on the boards is kind of interesting. That's manuscript three. Yeah. You can look at manuscript four oh, here. Oh, I know what's different between one and two. You did? Okay. missing act as well. The word Ooh, act. we're missing a word. Interesting. We're missing the cups. Yeah. And like I said, you can write it down, Luke. You can write it down in the ARC chat or in the Twitch chat. But write it down. We don't need to be... We'll be talking them all out here in a minute. So just write them down. Record them like Andy's doing. For you guys who are playing at home, you can record them there. So you can see what this one says. That is M4. And it helps, by the way, if you refer like Andy did, very professionally so. He's got M1 and M6 there, so we know which ones he's talking about. All right, we're going to go to this. This we're going to now look at M5. So that's M5. I'm going to shut off my... There we go. My display. Make sure I get some food, though. Some food. I'll shut that so we can kind of see what that one is. And you can see there's definitely some differences. You can just visually identify that on the boards, which is kind of interesting. So let's look at that one. All right. If you guys want me to back up or go forward at home, let me know. And I will do so. So this is M6. There we go. Uh, M2. All right. Very good, very good. Andy is on it. All right, we're going to fly around and go check out the... Those were the ingredients. Now let's look at the actual baking instructions. All right. Mm. Oh, I, love cookies in general. I know, right? This was... That was one of the things I totally beat up Jim on. I'm like, at least I have plausible deniability. I can't give you guys virtual cookies, right? I could try to stick... It's not going to work, right? So I got plausible deniability. But he had an in-person Bible study at church and didn't bring any chocolate chip cookies. So wrong. So wrong. Uh, so messed up. Paul says two sticks. Okay, there we go. So we got heat oven to 375 degrees. Mix in <laughs> ingredients. Add eggs. Beating well after each addition. Gradually beat in flour mixture. Stir in morsels and nuts. Bake for 9 Morsels. to 11 minutes or until golden brown. Mm. Morsels. Let's see. I'm referring. Yeah. Morsels, I'm thinking yeah. that's a chocolate chips. And I think you might be right. I think nuts. you might be right. Who puts nuts in their chocolate chips? Right? 
Right? Oh, so see? by looking at six things at the same time. Right? Right? Who puts nuts in their chocolate chip cookies? That's just an abomination. Perfect. Absolutely yes, wrong. Absolutely wrong. So that's the next one. All right, let's keep going. This is M3. Stir and morsels. Hey, I found, a, I found a different. There's no Go ahead and write it down, one. Luke. Write it down. <laughs> Go ahead and write it down. We got five more minutes. Five more minutes. Macadamia nuts are awesome. I don't think you can classify macadamia nuts as a nut. I, I know no. they technically are, but... That's a seed. Those are macadamia nut cookies, and those are good. This is M... This is M4. So heat oven to 375. Mix in ingredients, add eggs, beating well after each addition. Gradually beat in flour mixture, store in morsels. Bake for 9 to 11 minutes or until golden brown. Morsels. Morsels. There we go. And we got an LOL. We got an LOL. Uh, again with and apparently Nathaniel has a problem following instructions. He did not label the manuscript that had that uh, variance on it. So thank you, Nathaniel, for not following the instructions whatsoever. All right. Here we go. This one. Now, I'm looking. Something's different because this one's got... Oh, it's, this one's one of those ones that's got that that abomination of and nuts. Ugh. Ugh. All right. So this is nuts. M5. Why? Oh. 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 You should never right. bake anything for that many minutes. It'll just burn. You'll set your house on fire. All right. Then here's the last one. This is M6. So if you guys want me to go back and take a look at anyone uh, for you guys at home, happy to spin back around and take another look. Maybe we'll just go real slow. See if I can do backwards. There we go. This is M. Well, that doesn't make sense to go backwards. We'll go forwards. Forwards. No one should bake a cookie for that long. No one. You want your house to be on fire? Sure, go ahead. Uh, Nathaniel, that's extra crispy cookies. Yes, it is. <laughs> Alright, here we go. No, that's so extra this is burnt. M1. I can't get the cat to go straight while I go sideways. Go like that? No, like that? Like that? No. I wish I could get him to like... Go. Can't. Apparently I... Oh, because I'm facing the wrong way. That's one. I'll just go like this. There's one. There's two. M three. There's M four. That. Now you can kind of see how if you were in game right now, you'd be having a much better time. Just saying. Look at Andy. He's so excited. Okay. Look at the hill right next to the Bible study. We're looking at the recipes right now, Luke. Let's not mess up this field trip, okay? I have questions. It's too much. Too much. Too many differences. Too many differences. I have questions. What's your question, buddy? One more minute. More What's your question, Luke? Are there going to be more field trips in the future? I hope so. Hopefully, we shall have to see. then, go to one into the volcano and have to go all the way through the tech cave. <laughs> that does not sound like a field trip that's going to teach us a lot about the Bible. Alright. So, let's start talking about these documents and see what we have going on here. Alright. Um, anybody need more time? Anybody want me to go look at something again for them? Anybody, anybody, anybody? Bueller, Bueller, Bueller. Anybody got a question about so what we've seen so far? Most of the baking instructions don't have Fahrenheit besides the temperature. Okay, so you want to put... You were doing so good, Andy. So good. You are putting the reference to the actual manuscript and then your point that you wanted to put out. All right. So we are going to play the game Manuscript Expert. And we're going to not only look for the changes, but their potential meanings. All right. So we don't know 
how old or how young any of these copies are just by looking at them. Some of them might be a copy of the original and some might be a copy of a copy of a copy of a copy of a copy. All of these are six different independent manuscripts and now we are going to play Manuscript Expert in Arc. This discipline is what we would call a form of lower criticism. What we're doing right now is called lower criticism, where we examine the manuscripts that are here and try to determine what is an error, what is not an error, what is an alteration from the original, and how does this compare to the other manuscripts that we are going to look at? So, let's go through the changes. All right, let's see who got these. You guys keep track your own score at home, and we'll see if you got these. So, the first one is two and a quarter cups of all-purpose flour. So, who caught the issue with that? I'm going to go ahead and get off my uh, guy here. Okay. So let's see here. Two and a quarter cups of all-purpose flour. Oh, look at that. M2. There is an abbreviation for the cup. All right. M2 has an abbreviation of C period for a cup. Now, here's the question that you should ask. Do you have any doubt what that abbreviation actually means? Did the fact no. that it is an abbreviation destroy our ability to understand what the meaning is? of it is and what the original had in it does it and the answer obviously is no all right so i i'm curious i didn't see anyone just oh left. uh andy caught that one andy caught that one that it was an abbreviation wow i just like spilled coffee over all right moving on so the second one is one tablespoon of baking soda so two manuscripts have tablespoons two manuscript have teaspoons one manuscript has spoon and one has tea what? <laughs> yeah so we can see here there's all these different examples that says one tablespoon that says one teaspoon that says one spoon so they're different <laughs> they're different yeah right one spoon <laughs> all right so luke finds that very funny uh if it's lowercase what does that tell us? How can we know what the original was? What what might be some of the ways that we would look at this and go, I wonder what the original is? Well, we could go with the majority text. There are three that say teaspoon. We have two that spell it out and one that has a lowercase t, which is an abbreviation for teaspoon. So, that would be three that have teaspoon and one that says spoon. So it is uncertain. So we have three for sure teaspoons, one uncertain, and two that say tablespoons. So in order to determine what the original said, we could simply go with the majority. The majority of copies that we have say teaspoon. Since most of the manuscripts have this, and that might be good evidence, that it is teaspoon rather than tablespoon, but not necessarily. But it's okay. not airtight. Yeah. It's not airtight. You're exactly right. Just taking the count, not airtight, as Andy said. All right. One says, the next change is, tablespoon of salt. One tablespoon of salt. Exact same situation. Teaspoons, tablespoons. You'll notice what some say. One, uh, where's this salt? One tablespoon... Did I say salt or I say I meant to say baking soda, I think. Yeah, there it is. One teaspoon of salt. That says uh, one spoon of salt. This one says uh, one teaspoon of salt. That one says one tablespoon of salt. So you can kind of see how they have differences there. So it's the same exact case. And again, we could go with the majority rules factor. All right, what do we notice about the one cup of butter? Did anybody find that? The one cup of butter? M6 has an interesting addition. What does M6 say about the butter? Do you see it, Luke? 
What does it say? Welcome, Timmy. Two What's... sticks. Yeah, it provided oh. some extra detail, didn't it? I really want to hear about the conversation epitome, but right now we're in our Bible study. So if you could hold that, I would love talking to you about it afterwards. We're going through textual manuscript examination right now. Okay, so M6 adds softened. It also added two sticks to the description. Now, do you give that more weight or do you give more weight to the shorter manuscripts? As manuscripts tend to grow over time, as people tend to add explanation when copying and not really remove stuff. So when you hear someone say this manuscript family removes all of the references or words, we're going to talk about this later and why there are certain things that are not removed. This is not an inclination of manuscript copying the stuff that was removed but but added. So when people do manuscript copying, they don't usually remove things, they add things. And we're going to see that in weeks to come. What happened, Mike? Mike, you have a hot mic, Luke. Okay. So, and we're going to see this in weeks to come. Our problem is not that we don't have all scripture, and this is looking at what we have with actual scripture. It's the fact that we actually have too much. We have too many pieces for the puzzle in terms of information. So we're going to look at that in weeks to come. Okay, the next difference, uh, we have one, or I'm sorry, three quarters cup of grandulated, grandulated sugar. So let's take a look at that. So we have a misspelling here. Granulated instead of granulated. So that's in M1 as a D rather than a T. Now, all the other manuscripts have granulated. What can we conclude from this? At some point, there was a copy that was a T and it became a D. Can you imagine how that might have happened? Maybe one copyist had a sloppy T, which was unreadable by the next guy. And maybe that copyist wondered if granulated sugar back then, uh, where it came from, maybe it was, maybe it didn't know that granulated was granulated and wanted to be faithful. So he writes it down with the misspelling just in case it meant something. By comparing these manuscripts, we could safe, what could we safely conclude about the original reading? that obviously this is a spelling error. And it was maybe caused by misseeing something or thinking it was a D rather than a T. Now, we also have an error of three quarters cups of packed brown sugar. You guys see that? There are no variations with that specific aspect, but is it similar across all of them? So we can be sure that that one's right, right? All right, one teaspoon of vanilla extract. Again, this is just like the other one where there was tablespoons, teaspoons. Over here on manuscript number two, it's just a tea. So we have quite a few different, and this is kind of interesting just to show how things can, can enter in. We're gonna talk about unscale and minuscule later uh, in reference to this, but in ARC, I have only unscaled text. I can't do upper and lower case. So when I put this in, this was supposed to be a lower key case T, one small T oh. of salt. But because the ARC oh. interface put it as capital, now that would be a tablespoon. So you see how the technology, we talked about that earlier with the fact that if you wrote on papyrus, it had all the grains in it that would catch your pen. So they had to make everything block text. Well. Kind of a similar issue here. The technology I'm using has affected the outcome of the copy process. Oh, uh, I know how to type and do certain letters uh, capitalized through the keyboard. You just hold shift down when you're typing. You're right. You're right. You can do that, Luke. Very good down. job. But right now, ARC, even if you do lowercase, when it saves it into this view, 
it puts everything automatically to uppercase. That's just the technological limitations of it. So wouldn't this kind of be like the Bible, being all caps? Exactly. Some of the older translations that were unscale, being all capitalizations, and how Hebrew and uh, Aramaic and uh, Greek are all capitals, that would be a similar aspect to that. So if you're looking at capitalization to differentiate something, and you have everything as capital text, then you've lost it. So we have to look at that as well. Kind of interesting, huh? All right. Um, now we have an issue with two eggs. M6, again, adds words. So let's go take a look at M6. What does this M6 say? Luke, what's the difference between M5 and M6? Can you see it about the eggs? Large. Right? Large. So it's added text. Notice that? It's added text. It's added the word large. Very good. And then M6 also adds something about the chocolate chips. What does it show there? It says, it said, I'm sorry, not M6. That would have been M5 has it. It says it's a 12 ounce package of chocolate chips. So it says two cups, but then it says 12 ounce package. So it's added detail to that. So you can see how it's still the same information, but somebody has added detail to it. All right. Now, M2 abbreviates cups again. So we go back to M2. And we have an abbreviation of the cups to C of chocolate chips. Now, as anybody else want to point out um, things about the ingredients, any other things you noticed, we're going to go over to the instructions. All right. So in the instructions, M2 deleted the word oven. Look at that. Heat oven to 375 degrees in M1. But M2 left out the word oven. Interesting, huh? M6 added a specification for Fahrenheit. So we can see the 370 degrees Fahrenheit, the F there. Uh, M1 contains N nuts, which is just an abomination. Um, <laughs> notice. Why nuts? Yeah, and you guys notice something about the, the references? There's a couple of them with adding nuts to it. And what do we notice that's interesting about the fact that this says uh, nuts? It says stir in the morsels and nuts. Well, if we look at the ingredients, do you notice there's no reference to nuts in the ingredients? Kind of interesting, right? Leads us to this idea that perhaps that was not in the original. Seeing all of them do not have nuts in the ingredients. We'll talk about that in a minute, though. All right, here's a big one. Here's a big one. M2 says something. Luke spotted it. What's the problem with M2, Luke, with the uh, with the instructions? Big for 911 minutes if you do that. Wow. You're going to burn your house down. You're going to burn your house down. Exactly. Those would be some pretty crispy cookies indeed. Yes, certainly, certainly. That's pretty crispy furniture. You're right. So, M6 also contains the word for chocolate chip morsels, all of, or just chocolate chip where all others say morsels. Uh, M6 also says one at a time regarding adding the eggs. M2 deletes a word. So, this is M2 right here. Can you guys tell me what, what word words actually were deleted from M2? It says bake for 911 minutes, but you'll notice that the other ones say what, Luke? What do the other ones say? Or until golden brown. Exactly. So M2 leaves that out. Interesting, huh? All right. And that's the only one. M2 is the only one that doesn't have that. M1 appears to have another spelling mistake, but that it wasn't translated over in my example. So here's that. Here's what I want you guys to do. Can somebody take it? Take a moment, looking at what's in the chat there. And I would like you guys to think about all these errors. What can we say about them? Would you say that there's a lot of errors or a few errors? What do you guys think? Is this a lot of errors lot of in these errors. documents? Luke says a lot of errors. What do you think, Andy? Is it a lot of errors or not? 
There's a lot of differences. A lot of differences, exactly. And these are called textual variances. Variance. That's the appropriate name for it. Textual variances. Man. All right, yes. We can say there are a lot of differences right off the bat. This is a very short manuscript, relatively speaking. These are not big manuscripts, but man, there are a lot of differences in them, aren't there? Look at that. And it's just that little short bit. All right. Let's talk about the observations and conclusions we can draw from these manuscripts and these, these textual variances. What do you notice about M6? What's unique about it compared to all the other manuscripts? Can anybody tell me? What's unique about M6 as compared to all the other ones? M6 mm. has a tendency to explain what is meant. Notice it's added words for clarity. Even when it ran out of space, they were still adding words. If we find that M6 is newer than, say, M5, and that it was written, say, after the Celsius scale came into effect, what would we conclude from that then? That the author wanted to make sure we knew which degree scale to use. That might mean that it predated Celsius, or, or I'm sorry, that would mean the other manuscripts might have predated Celsius. It might, but it might not necessarily. It might be that the others are newer as well, but those authors wanted to be faithful to the original recipe and not modify them. Okay, what do you notice about M2? What's unique about it? Can anybody tell me? Looking at M2, there's something specific about it that's different than the other manuscripts. M2 has a tendency to shorten or drop unnecessary words. It, lots of abbreviations here. Notice as to the extent of the others that don't. All right. Now, why would M2 be abbreviated? I wonder, right? Why would M2 be abbreviated? Maybe the person who was writing it was rushed. Maybe they were making the copy quickly. Perhaps that was... Uh, perhaps when they made it, those were the common abbreviations at the time, so the person who was copying could assume that everyone knew what they were. M2 has forgotten a bunch of things in it, right? M2 is very abbreviated. So what might be the reason for that? Maybe he was he was rushed because there was persecution happening, and he was he was really trying to make sure he got the recipe written down before it was too late. Okay, if Later on, while we're in the ark, we find a new copy of the recipes. Let's just call it M7 or Manuscript 7 that I know was copied from one of these six manuscripts. And it, and it consisted of the Fahrenheit designation. What could we conclude? Remember, the Fahrenheit designation was only here on number six. What could we conclude about that? Could we then know that M7 was copied from M6? Could we conclude that? Because we found it afterwards? Maybe, maybe but maybe not. Just because we found it after we found M6 doesn't mean it was copied before it, right? It could be that M6 was actually copied from M7. We have to look at more than just when we found it, right? All right. Yeah. If we find a cookie recipe that called for baking 911 minutes, what could we conclude? Was it copied from no. M2, right? Can I conclude that it would be or assume that? I would be assuming it was copied from M2, but it doesn't have to be. So on the basis of some of these similarities of these manuscripts, we might be able to group them into families. So think about it. If we found a, another manuscript that had 911 minutes, we might be able to put these into a grouping of saying these are all similar manuscripts because of this similar error. Does that make sense? Okay. So. Kind of like a fingerprint. Exactly, Andy. Kind of like a fingerprint. 
Very, very good point. So that is that is the way we group manuscripts into common families based upon the differences that they share. Very, very good point. All right. M1 had two spelling errors. One of them I transmitted over, one of them I, I didn't. Now, what can we say about that? Why would M1 have these uh, spelling conditions? I'm going to have to mute your guys' audio because <laughs> you guys are making so much noise that I'm unable to actually uh, follow along in the game. So I'm muting all your audio. All right. Okay. So, being a little rude, guys. So when we look at these manuscripts, M1 has two spelling errors. One of them you saw, one of them I omitted. But what might this say about M1? What If it has these spelling errors, can we make any guesses about why that spelling error is in there? Let's go look at that spelling error again. What was it? It had the word granulated sugar. Okay, so what's the possibility here? Why might it be granulated? Well, first and foremost, the easy one. The copier made a mistake, right? He misspelled it. But it also might mean that the copy that he was copying from, maybe it was degraded. Maybe there was, there was a issue with um, the ink becoming smeared or wearing off. Maybe there was a crease at that point. Maybe it wasn't the fact that he made a spelling error. Maybe he couldn't tell what it was because the original copy that he was working off of was degraded. Now, we must suspect that there's going to be um, problems with these if they were dictated by voice, right? This might be a possibility. Like if I'm talking over the phone and I say, well, it's granulated or granulated, right? That might be if it was a verbal thing in translating these over. That might appreciate, it might be, something to do with how the person heard. Maybe they had an issue with actually perceiving it. Before moving on to the key questions that we want to ask, I want you guys just to take an effort, just give me a count of how many differences you find. Can somebody tally them up, take a moment? How many, how many did you find? Throw a number in, make a guess. And we're gonna go ahead and back up so we can see them all at the same time. Andy says 14, good guess, Andy. All right, we got 14 possible errors between them. Andy says, I don't know, just kidding. We covered quite a few, right? And I would think if we spent some more time, we could probably find more. Now, is it a small amount or a big amount of errors? The reality that we talked about a moment ago, it's a lot of differences. There are a lot of errors in just this short little manuscript. Now, key questions. By comparing all of these recipes, and this is important, ready to answer this. By comparing all of these recipes, do you think that we could successfully make a batch of chocolate chip cookies? Do you think if we used all these recipes, we could? If you only say had manuscript two, you'd mess it up, right? If all we had was manuscript two and we tried to make some cookies, we'd mess it up, right? because we'd be cooking them for 911 minutes, that would, that would be messed up. But remember, we don't have just manuscript two. We have all of these manuscripts to cross compare. So if we're cross comparing all these manuscripts, could you do it? Could you make a batch of cookies? I conclude the spelling errors and I can see the timing issues. And guess what? We could figure it out. We could make some notes and we could obviously exclude the nuts because that would be an abomination. But we could determine that, hey, this is the recipe within about 99.9% .9 accuracy. I want you to think about that, okay? We have all these errors, and yet we can be pretty confident, right? That we could get this back to about 99.9% .9 accuracy. By cross-comparing all these, we could determine what the original was. Now. Understood, we have to use our common sense with this particular example, knowing also some of the errors that the copyists made. We can look at these and we can say, okay, these were errors that were spelling mistakes. People misspell words. These were abbreviations. People abbreviate things. We can make those kind of decisions and understand how we could get back to something that is identical to the original. 
if not close enough to the original that any wording or order wouldn't make any difference. Is this a true statement? Do you agree with me that we could get this back to within 99% of the original manuscript with these six? Do you guys see that? Do you agree with me on that? Notice the things like teaspoon would be concluded that it was the majority reading, right? That it obviously should be tablespoon uh, or not, not tablespoon. It should be teaspoon. Now, what did somebody say? Yeah. Andy says, maybe. You guys, maybe? Really, Andy? Come on. We got pretty good data here. All right. So what are we talking about here? There is a science that goes into this. It's not just about guesswork. As we know, the kinds of errors that copyists make as they make copies. There are other factors that come into this as well. If I were to tell you, say, that unsil and minuscule text were used, and if this was all written in unsil, we would know that it was earlier, right? Therefore, if we saw, found some of the copies that were in unsil and some of them were minuscule, we know that, oh, those were earlier copies, and so we would give them more weight. You would give older more weight to older copies because we would assume they were likely more accurate. It's not just counting manuscripts and saying the most read this is, that we would go with that. We don't do an election process when we look at manuscripts and copying them. We weigh the manuscript, okay? That's what we want to look at, weight of the manuscript, not necessarily how many of them there are. We look and we use a discipline called lower criticism to weigh the manuscripts and say, this manuscript has the age, came from this location, has a transmission history, and we look at it and it may have been a copy from the original or a copy from the original copy of the original because of its date and where it was located and how it was found. Those things all weigh into how we consider these manuscripts. We might use that to completely remove M6. Remember, M6 had additional things written into it, right? We might just take this one right out. We might say, this is, this is too far gone from the originals. There's stuff in here that none of the others have. So we're going to exclude this one. This has been too far gone. And we would still be able to equate to the original, all right? We would still have enough data to re be able to recreate. And we might even remove M2. Remember I had the 911? We might pull that one as well, and we would still have enough to make chocolate chip cookies. Example, if the nuts were an issue that only a couple of manuscripts had, but perhaps had great impact on a profound theological issue, like should you have nuts in cookies? That would be a pretty profound theological issue. Is this my son? I think this is my son. Oh, who is this? That's Tim Kid. Hi, Tim's kid. I'm going to wave back at you. Nice to see you. All right, I'm going to go ahead and get back up here. A little distracting, but we'll go ahead and get back. All right. So when we look at something like, should you have nuts and cookies? We might put more weight on that because that's a profound thing, right? We might think, okay, was this added at a later date? If this changes our, our, an original doctrine, like say we had original doctrine, there's never going to be nuts and cookies. And then we see that somebody added nuts and cookies. We can go, wait a minute. This We're going to lessen the weight of the, of the validity of these documents because they negate a fundamental doctrine or theology. All right. Now, this is a quick example that I'm going to give you from actual scripture. In 1 John chapter 2, there is something called the Johannian comment, where it talks about the water and the blood. These three are one. Now, why is this important? Because it's not in the earliest manuscripts. It seems to be a Trinitarian reference and explanation. It was probably a marginal note that got worked into the text at some point. 
This is what we're going to be talking about next week. This was all prep for that. So we're going to be talking about the variances that we find between manuscripts and how they got to be in the text. Okay, or what would you say? I don't have any way of knowing what the original recipe is. Therefore, the chocolate chip cookie recipe is lost forever. No, of course not. Even though we don't have the original, we can recreate it from these from these copies. All right. Now, does the presence of error in these copies mean that the original had errors too? Can we reasonably reconstruct the original from these copies? Can we know with a reasonable degree of certainty the types of errors that may have been introduced and how many errors were made? And the answer is obviously yes. Are these changes, alterations, mistakes, variances of equal significance? And of course the answer is no. A spelling mistake, for example, does not have the same weight as say adding of some, some sort of new information like adding the with nuts. Can you take a reasonable guess at how many generations removed from the original each of these manuscripts is? You might be able to reasonably guess that some of the fewer error manuscripts are removed or have a lesser uh, distance from the original. Others might be closer. One of two may be only one generation removed from the original. Manuscript two might be a copy that the original one had abbreviated. Interesting, huh? All right, when we look at this, it's very important for you to take away this very, very important point. The manuscript tradition of the New Testament is not nearly as messed up as this example we just looked at. Not even close. We're not talking about manuscripts that even come close to the kind of variances we have here in this example I've shown you. We're not talking about an example which is heavily proliferated of variances. This was a deliberate effort. We went through this to show how many possible errors that might enter in because of copying mistakes and variances, spelling errors, missing or adding words, errors that might be because of listening. This was all added in here and heaped them in here to demonstrate that even though you take these variances, you can still get back to the original. Now, the New Testament documents don't have anything close to this. Even if you took the variances in the New Testament documents that are there and multiplied them by 10,000, it still doesn't mess up our ability to get to the original. The New Testament is not like this example. We're not talking about a paragraph where there are 10 different errors or differences between the same paragraph in another manuscript family. That is not what we have in the New Testament. We don't have anything of that type of concentration of errors like we have demonstrated in this example. Nothing even close. And you'll see in the weeks ahead, when we look into these variances, when we find how small they truly are. That's a very strange thing to say. When you're talking about New Testament documents, although we're talking about these types of errors, we're not talking about this volume of differences in the text. The differences in the New Testament is widely minimal compared to this. This was to get you to think about evaluating changes and understanding the variances, what variances are, and even with that, we can faithfully get back to the original text. I hope this was helpful and productive. Now, next week, we're going to look at what actual variances are in our New Testament texts, and you might fully appreciate how messed up these ones were as compared to how few in the entirety of the Bible. Think about that. 66 books, 31,102 verses. The amount of textual variances are minimal. So, so minimal. Uh, thanks. It was a very good lesson.
Thank you, Andy. I appreciate that encouragement. All right, we're going to go ahead and go back to the Bible study room and close out in prayer. All right, let's go ahead and head back. And we're going to close out in prayer in the Bible study room. I'll be sure to bring the nuts. Yeah, we don't want no nuts. Oh, thank you. All right, we're going to go ahead and close in prayer. I want to make sure I drink some water before my character dies. And before I close out in prayer, we have a few moments. Does anybody have any questions? Luke, you're not muted. I muted the uh, SFX, not your voice. I can hear you. If you have a question, go ahead and ask. But no, I will no. un I will put the SFX volumes back in. Go ambient volume back in. You guys were being rude while I was trying to talk. So that's why I muted it. And I'm glad to have the ability to do that. I hope next time you will be a little bit more considerate of the fact that the people, especially at home, are not able to hear very well when they have everybody jumping around and making all that noise. So I would be grateful for that. All right, any questions before we close in prayer? Hey, Pastor James says, good lesson. I am grateful for that. Thank you very, very much. Now, if anybody wants a quick snapshot, get ready. I'm going to bring up what the paper was that I was working off of, which was this right here. This is the actual um, comparison that I did that I transmitted in. Peter, can you please keep William in prayer? He was taken to the hospital today. I will keep William in prayer. Okay, we will do that right now. We'll pray for William and close out this Bible study. But this was what I was originally work of, working off of was that right there as I translated it into ARC. All right, we'll go ahead and close in prayer. Almighty God in heaven, I thank you for this opportunity to do this lesson. I thank you that the visual aids uh, worked out the way I was hoping. I am grateful, Lord, that we're able to use this technology for good teaching. And I am grateful for everyone who, uh, who did attend. I hope this helped them to understand how uh, errors can be introduced, and yet, Lord, how we can still get back to an understanding faithfully of what the original text was. And as we look at um, further examples in the New Testament, that this will be uh, very clear, Lord, how you have done such an amazing job that we would know the truth and we would know the accuracy in the original text and what you have preserved. We also pray for William as he has been taken to the hospital. We know not what for, but you do, Lord. We pray for blessings of healing upon him and that you would bless the doctors with the ability to help. We ask this all knowing what a good, loving, and awesome God you are. And we pray this all in Jesus Christ's name, our King and Savior. Amen. Thank you, everybody, for joining us for Lesson 8. This was the... Bible and chocolate chip cookie recipe. Hope someday oh, we'll actually have real chocolate chip cookies. That'll be wonderful. You. All right. All right. Andy is overheated. Amen. 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 All right, guys. I hope you have an all have a very blessed day. We'll be back next week for lesson eight. I hope you'll join us.